Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. Today is a bit of a mechanical video. I want to kill two birds with one stone here. About a week ago, a friend asked for a friend where my video on how to use a syringe to fill a fountain pen was in my, uh, my video library. Well, it took me a while to find it. It was buried in one of the reviews that I did about six months ago. So I thought I'd put it all in one place. And I've also merged this how to use a syringe uh, video with uh, a nib swap. I just received this Moonman M800, and it came with a Moonman nib, and I did a review, which I put up just uh, yesterday, I guess now. It came with, of course, the Moonman nib, not the Bach nib, but this Moonman. It's a number six, and I tweaked it a bit, and it's writing very nicely. But just about a week ago, a friend of mine on the PenBBS forum, Taste the Rainbow, which is a PenBBS fan uh, group on Facebook, mentioned to me that he had a couple of spare two-toned Pen BBS Mini Fude or Waverly style nibs, and he generously supplied me with these two nibs, two of them, that he has as spares. I tell you, this uh, this group of people are either fanatics or they're just really generous people or they're generous fanatics. But uh, these two beautiful nibs, they come in the 456, and I have one in my 456. And then there's the reverse image, which is gold. This is like uh, gold on silver. But the reverse image of this is silver on gold, uh, is in my 355. I'll show an image here uh, on the screen of the two nibs side by each. And uh, you'll see that they're, they're beautiful nibs, and they write beautifully. And so... As soon as uh, Luke sent me these, thank you very much, Luke. You're very, very generous. So I thought, well, I will do the swap for these two nibs. And while I'm at it, I will do a video on the pieces of the Moonman M800. Of course, when you get the Moonman, it has this section with the nib and feed in this collar, which is screwed into the section. So you have the whole thing together like that. It's an easy process to just take this apart and after you've soaked it in a little soap and water and rinsed it out and everything that actually comes off very very easily. And most people just remove it with this and you can actually replace these nib collars and nib units with new nibs anytime you want. You can buy them on eBay. I'll show the auction right here on eBay uh, that you can get these, these nibs with the entire assembly. Uh, but you can also use a little bit of rubber mat and just give a gentle tug. These things come out easily, not like the number five Moonman nibs in the M2s. I still can't get one of the assemblies apart on one of those. But you take that nib off, and you take the replacement number six, and I've done this before on a Moonman on a Moonman M600, so I know that they fit. So you line these up just like that. What you want to do is line the edges of that feed up with where it meets the swoop of the sides of the nib, and they're centered. And then the back of the feed has got a flatted section on it and it matches with that little flatted section right there. And you just slide it all together until you, it won't slide anymore. And then I take my rubber matting material, give it a good push to make sure it's firmly seated. As one of my viewers mentioned in a comment, uh, the alignment of that feed has as much to do with how well your pen writes as everything else you do to a nib in terms of tuning it. So it's very, very important that that's aligned property. 
I know that this works. This pen BBS nib works with this Moonman feed. So you don't the pen BBS feed will not fit in the Moonman collar. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to screw it back into the section. just so it's firm. Double check the alignment because then when you're twisting it sometimes it comes out of alignment. And it seems to be aligned pretty well. And I'll even give it a bit of a polish at this point before it's full of ink. That's looking nice and then you can ink it up and give it a try. So while I'm inking it up, I want to show how I use a syringe to ink up a converter. And the reason I do this is because the typical way of filling a pen with a converter is you bring the piston all the way down, you stick the nib all the way up to the, there's a little hole right at the base right there, that's your filler hole you got to get the ink down to that point, and then you draw the ink up through the nib. And then, of course, you have to wipe all the ink off the nib and off the section. I don't tend to like that. I know people wear these inky fingers as a badge of honor, but I don't like going to dinner parties covered in ink. So, what I like to do is I will take the piston all the way back inside the converter, get my bottle of ink. In this case, it's this beautiful queasy Azure number no. five that I've just received from Bauer Inks in Toronto. Give myself a little bit of ink, stick the syringe into the converter, and just fill it up to the collar. So I've left a little bit of space there. At this point, I have not got any ink other than what was on my fingers already. On my fingers, and then twist the converter into the section. Now at this point, you've got ink here, but you've got no ink from here to the end of the nib. And you'd normally just have to turn it upside down and wait. But I like to do this as well, and it's called priming the feed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the piston so it pushes down and it's going to push air through the nib. Now I turn it upside down. You can also do this with it right side up. But if you've got good light, I'm turning that piston and you'll start to see ink flowing. There it is. Ink flowing. See, it's, it's flowed right down into here. Right into there down around the feed and around the slit. And you start seeing it bubble a little bit at that filler hole. Here's a little trivia question for you. Who knows what those fins are for on the feed? Does anybody know? I have an answer because I found out. See, inquiring minds want to know these things. Before air travel, the fins on fountain pens were solid pieces with the channel and everything, but none of these fins. Um, and as soon as people started taking their fountain pens on aircraft and the altitude changes, people started getting leaking and burping. As the pressure changes, it pushed the ink out. So what they did was they put all these fins in there to capture a whole bunch of ink so that if the pressure changes, it fills up those little crevices first before it drips out the nib. So it gives you a little bit of ink capacity there for, for air pressure changes. I think that's fascinating. 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 Please, Spock, do me a favor and don't say it's fascinating. No. But it is interesting. So now we've primed that feed, and the pen should write at this point. So let's give it a try and see if it works. This is a moon man. Oh my goodness. M800 with a P1000 
pen BBS. Fine nib. Hoo, 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 that's wet. Wow. Smooth. Holy mackerel. Holy shit. That's awesome. I know I haven't got my camera in the perfect position for this writing sample, but wow we no tuning whatsoever. I'm wondering, Luke, maybe you can tell me in the comments on this video, did you do anything to this nib, or is this a fresh, untampered-with nib? This is, a, again, a Waverly-style, upturned, mini Fude nib from Pen BBS, and this pen is now freaking awesome. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm very pleased about that. So, <laughs> I can't wait to write like crazy with this pen. So I failed to mention something and I'm going to insert it here. And that was using a syringe to refill an empty cartridge. So I'm gonna use my Pilot E95S as an example here, this pen takes Pilot proprietary cartridges. And uh, when you buy cartridges, they're fairly expensive actually when you look at relative price between bottled ink and cartridge ink. But if you buy one package of these Pilot cartridges and pierce that seal with something like a pencil or a sharp point of some sort, you can even use the blunt end of your syringe and suck that ink out or use up the ink in your pen then just use the syringe to rinse out that empty cartridge and clean it out and dry it with a q-tip that kind of thing you've got an empty cartridge that you can fill with your syringe and it can be reusable and as that thing wears out if it ever wears out which it probably wouldn't you can use the remaining cartridges. So it's as simple as getting your ink and filling it just as if it was a converter. Again, leaving a little bit of amount of air at the top and then inserting the cartridge in your pen. It works really nicely with this pen because the converter that you can get for this pen, but it doesn't come with it, is the Con 40 by Pilot. And when you insert that converter with ink and everything in it, just like that, you can't see the ink supply at all. So you have to almost, you have to take the converter out to check your ink, remaining ink supply. Whereas with the cartridge, all you have to do is turn the pen upside down and you'll see how much air is in there and how much ink is remaining. And then you can refill it with your syringe. Just a little budget tip. I'm gonna do a little comparison and put it up on the screen right here of the difference between buying a bottle of Konpeki and buying a package of Pilot Blue and what the difference is in the cost between the two. So the other reason that you can use the syringe is for filling an eyedropper pen. And an eyedropper like the Moonman M2. This is an M2 and I've replaced the nib on this pen with a 0.7 stub that uh, you can get on Bobby's eBay page. And I will put that um, auction up on the screen here as well. And Eyedropper pens take a lot of capacity of ink. They're terrific. Um, they usually have some kind of a silicone O-ring right there. And you put a little bit of silicone grease around here as well just to keep it from leaking. But all you have to do here is use your syringe to fill the pen. And in this case, what I'm going to do is fill this M2 with some Robert Oster Fire and Ice. 
I've heard a lot about this ink and I'm really interested to see it and I wanted to have it in a pen that had a, a nice thick wet line so I can see some of the effects of this this ink and I'm going to do a review of this ink very shortly but we're going to use this pen to do it. So we take our ink, this is the first time I'm opening this ink. This again came from Bauer Inks in Toronto, who is the Canadian distributor of Robert Oster Inks. And we're going to draw up quite a bit more ink here because we're going to need more than what a converter will take. And we're going to Boy, I underestimated how much I'd need. That was about three, three and a half milliliters of ink. Now, I'm not going to fill it all the way up here. You need some room here for the air pressure to change and so forth. And so I'm just going to, just a drop more, and that's about it. I like these bottles. They are plastic. Some people don't like the plastic bottles, but they're fairly wide at the top, and they're very deep. So that... Uh, you can extract most of that ink out of there without having to tap it off into another vessel. Now, without a converter, the eyedropper pen, you have to invert the pen and wait. So, find yourself a glass or a cup or something. I have these little guys that my Sun 3D printed for me, so I can put that pen right in through the body of that guy and wait for the ink to flow, and then give that a try. Put that aside. Other pens that aren't aren't specifically eyedropper pens actually can be eyedroppered. Some are a little bit more prepared than others for it. This is a Lingmo Lorelei 019 very very similar to a pen bbs 308 and they have a little silicone o-ring as well right there so that you can use it with a converter as a normal pen or you can take the converter off put a little bit of silicone grease there and fill this up and you get about three milliliters two and a half milliliters of ink in that pen with it eyedroppered and the important thing is that you not fill that any further than the bottom of those threads, right about there. Leave some gap. I speak from experience. If you fill it right up and then try to close that up, you'll end up pushing ink all over the place. So once that's closed down, the one thing that you can't do, however, because you haven't got the converter, is you can't prime that feed. But actually, if you don't want to wait and you're impatient wait for, it. Uh, for that ink to flow down through there, you can take the, the pen and just dip it through to the feed to saturate the feed with some ink, and then you're ready to go. So I thought I'd also show you where you can get some of these syringes. This syringe here was purchased as one of two that I bought from uh, Goulet Pens. And they were about $5 US a piece. But my friend found this site on Amazon that has these great big blunt-ended syringes for sale. And they're, they're quite inexpensive when you buy them in bulk like this. And the key to whether a pen is eyedropperable, if that's a word, is whether there's any metal parts. So if you take the converter off of your pen... Uh, and you have an empty plastic barrel, but there's metal parts on your section, no, that's no good. You can't eyedropper that. But if it's all resin or all plastic, then you're probably good to go. If it has that little O-ring, it really helps. I've tried to eyedropper pens that didn't have the O-ring, like the uh, Moonman S1. I tried to eyedropper that pen, even though it was all resin, it leaked through the threads, even though I put lots of silicone grease on it. So your mileage may vary as always. Your mileage may vary. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell.
to be notified when any new videos appear. That just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching, and that's all she wrote.